Good morning, everyone. Let's do that again. I like the energy over there. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Friday the 13th. Nobody's, hope nobody's suspicious in this crowd. Um, my name is Grant Oliphant. I'm privileged to serve as president of the Heinz Endowments. And it's our great uh, pleasure to be hosting um, this discussion with you today. We have a really exciting day, and I just want to uh, frame a couple of quick thoughts for you as you start the day. Um, and I know this group comes from all kinds of different interests and backgrounds, um, but it's exciting that you're coming together to talk about this subject. So let me just touch on a couple of key points to get us started. The movements of oil trains through our, you know, this seems like such an esoteric subject for people when you, I, on the way over here, I, I stopped and, at the Coffee Tree coffee shop and mentioned to somebody I was on my way to an oil train conference and they had no clue what I meant. Um, uh, but what we know, for those of us who have been paying attention to this issue, is that this is an issue that poses real risks and raises real questions um, that are present and immediate, and we as a community and I think as a country need to better understand what those are. Um, just simply understanding is a challenge for all of us today because the availability of authentic and current data is fragmented about the volume of oil train traffic traveling through this region uh, and many other regions. So is the information we are able to get about the potential hazards that may represent and the regulatory framework that oversees its operation. What we do know is that oil train traffic nationally has surged more than eightfold between 2011 and 2014, currently up to about 25 convoys weekly, each carrying one million gallons or more of crude oil, pass along rail lines that cut through our densely populated downtown region and outlying adjacent communities. What we also know is that oil train incidents, including derailments, are increasing. In recent years, there have been 10 incidents in North America where oil trains have exploded, the worst case being the tragedy at Lac Majantic. I don't know if I'm pronounced, how is that? Uh, what? Megantic. Uh, in Quebec, uh, in July 2013, when 47 people lost their lives. There have been derailments resulting in spills into waterways, polluting drinking water supplies and sensitive natural habitats. There have been numerous near misses and in Pennsylvania there have been three reported oil train derailments since January of 2014. Just last weekend there were two more derailments in Wisconsin, both involving leakages, one of crude oil and the other ethanol, which resulted in evacuations of people living nearby. Across the US and Canada, these health and safety concerns have, I think, appropriately and quickly risen onto the agendas of local civic and community leaders, safety experts, researchers, and citizens, which is why the Heinz Endowments has taken the decision to initiate this forum. We have a full program, and you will be hearing from a wide range of experts in their fields today, and I, I'm sort of, my mind's blown by how many people we're gonna hear from today, so I hope you're really, fueled up um, and, and ready for this day. We're gonna hear from local and elected government uh, uh, officials, community and civic leaders, regulators, researchers, representatives of nonprofits and concerned organizations. I wanna say in, um, at the outset that we recognize that energy is central to everything we do in this country and that we are in the midst of a transformation in our nation's energy production. Um, but so often that is used as a false dichotomy for then having a conversation about how to keep our environment safe, our natural resources safe, and our communities and our people safe. We do not accept that false dichotomy. And the spirit in which we hope to engage in this conversation is that um, adults who are informed can look at a problem and figure out creative solutions to, to achieve not just a single economic goal, but also social goals and environmental goals as well. This conference is designed to take a critical step in providing a forum for discussion and sharing information, which we hope will help to define the scale 
and scope of this issue for our region. We will consider actions and measures to safeguard our community, and we will have the opportunity to learn from the work undertaken in other parts of the U.S. represented here today. Before we move on, I'd like to thank the local um, nonprofit organization, Frack Tracker, for organizing and coordinating today's event so efficiently. They've done an awesome job. They've been supported by California-based nonprofit Forest Ethics, which has organized its own two-day event this weekend to provide strategic guidance for nonprofits and community organizations in addressing this issue. I also I would like to thank the Foundation for Pennsylvania Watersheds, the George Gund Foundation, and the Rockefeller Family Fund for helping the endowments to fund this event. Uh, and I especially want to call attention to a member of my team, Phil Johnson, who has been on the case on this issue for pretty much the year and three months since I joined the endowments. I've heard more about oil trains than almost any other issue. Um, if you know Phil, you know he's persistent. Uh, and I really am grateful to him for uh, helping to tee up this conversation in our community. Um, you know, there's a, uh, Star Wars is coming back. Um, for those of you who care about these things, I do. Um, <laughs> And so I thought I just would close with a quote from the great philosopher Yoda in The Empire Strikes Back that um, there's do and not do, there is no try. I think what we have to do with conversations like this is force the folks who are in a position of authority to do something about an issue like this to adjust and to keep our community safe. So let's approach the day in that spirit. Thank you very much for being here.